Today I'm going to be showing you a new range of white metal miniatures that I've got available for sale in my Etsy shop. I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint the pieces and also give you some useful techniques for creating wood effects and rust effects. You'll also find a selection of humbrol, enamel, matte and gloss paints in my Etsy shop along with the small paintbrushes that I use throughout this video and I'll put a link to the Etsy shop below. OK, let's get started. OK, so I just wanted to start by showing you the pieces that I've ordered in and these will all be available for sale in my Etsy shop. And the first of them is this lovely jug and I, I really love these. I like to include um, jugs, either enamel jugs like this or stoneware jugs in my kitchen scenes. If I can show you inside there, it doesn't go right down to the bottom, so it's solid from about there down. Um, but you still would be able to display flowers in there. You'd probably need to just cut the stems off, put a little bit of tacky wax in the bottom there, and then do your display. I really like these. I'm going to be painting a couple of these today, so I'll do one in the sort of traditional white and blue, which would have been popular sort of during wartime, and one as well in the cream. The next couple of items are these little clocks and very different styles but these would have both dated from around the 1920s or 30s so you could use these for sort of um, vintage dolls houses or displays and I can remember my grandmother had one like this um, it was made from wood it was just always on the mantelpiece and I'm going to be painting um, these today as well and I'm going to show you how to do a wood effect on these and then these are sold um, either separately or you can buy them in a pack of two and I've just ordered in the single packs so you could just buy these on their, on their own and then they come with their little clock faces as well now when the clock faces are kept in the pack they tend to yellow it's just a water slide transfer but the instructions do say that once these have sort of been exposed to light for a while they will whiten up Another lovely clock here, um, again quite a different style and this is like a sort of French style but could be used in many settings now especially sort of shabby chic settings, I think that would look lovely and I'm not going to paint this one today but you could paint that in um, white with maybe gold highlights or I've seen them in pink or blue and again that comes with the little clock face the other thing I'll be painting today is this fabulous bread bin and these would have been made from enamel and again would have been popular during the 40s and 50s but people like them nowadays for that sort of vintage style. Next is this fabulous little set of scales and I'm going to be painting this today for my own doll's house kitchen and I thought I would do it in black and I'm going to buff up the tray here and you can just very gently sand those and get them to a really nice polished um, silver so we're going to be doing that as well pop that back on there and again that comes with a little um, face part there next is this little set of knives so you've got a bread knife there and a general cutting knife and that's probably some sort of meat knife there and again these are for my own kitchen and I'm going to be painting the handles and touching in the little screws and finally another fabulous little set of utensils again which I'll be using in my kitchen and I find it quite hard to find scale utensils and that's what's so good about these metal miniatures is they are um, correct scale a lot of the time you can buy a wooden spoon and it's almost two inches long and in real life that would be sort of two foot long um, which is totally out of scale and it will look out of scale as well in your kitchen so these are perfectly to scale so this really is just a small selection of the products that are available and if these prove to be popular in my Etsy shop then I will be ordering more in I really love them um, like I said before they're true to scale and they're so detailed as well and you also have the satisfaction of painting them yourself so you've actually customised the piece yourself before you put it into your doll's house which I like. 
and they actually do a large range of um, 12 scale ornaments. And I don't know about you, but I find it quite difficult finding scale ornaments for the doll's house. So we'll certainly be ordering some of those in at a later date. But we'll have a practice at painting these first. And next I'll show you what brushes and paints we'll be using. OK, so to actually paint the metal miniatures, we're going to be using an enamel paint, which is an oil based paint. Now, enamel works better on metal because it doesn't absorb water. So choose an enamel rather than an acrylic paint. Now, I've used acrylic paint on metal miniatures before, and I found that after a while it actually just started to peel off rather just like a, a, la a rubbery layer. So always use the enamel paints and because it's oil based, you'll then need to wash your brush out um, in a spirit, in white spirit, and then clean them off with water. So I've got a few different types of paint here. So I've got a matte paint in a couple of colours and the matte colour number one, which is a pale grey, is also used as a primer. And we'll be using this to prime the miniatures today. And it's always better to apply a, a good quality primer under the paint because that will give a better finish. And then I've got some gloss colours as well. And then I've got a couple of um, their metallic colours and they're called MET and then the number. And these come in gold and silver and a bronze. And we're going to be using those to do the little um, rings around the clocks. And then for the brushes, I've just got these synthetic brushes I've got a size 0, 1 and 2. Once again, all of these items will be available for sale um, in my Etsy shop. I've only ordered the selection of um, colours that we'll be using today. But again, if these are proved to be popular, I'll be ordering more colours. OK, let's get started. OK, so the first thing to do is have a look around your miniature and just see if there's any little bits on there overhanging or any little sharp edges. And that's just where sometimes when they come out of the mould, um, they don't break away entirely. So you may find um, some little bits on there that shouldn't be there. And if so, you can just snip those away using your craft knife. Now, I've been around all of mine and I haven't found any. And then the other thing as well is if there's any sort of rough um, surfaces, you can use a little bit of wire wool and you can just wipe that over. You don't want to use um, sort of a too harsh a sandpaper or anything because you'll scratch the surface. And even just going around with this really lightly, that's really put in a lovely sort of um, finish on the surface there. And this is how we'll be shining up the tray for the um, set of scales I'm going to use in my kitchen. That looks lovely already. So you don't have to sort of buff them to a high shine, but just go over the surface and make sure you've got a nice smooth finish. OK, so the next thing to do is just wipe the miniature over with some warm soapy water and that will just remove um, any of the mould release product that they use. So I've got some warm soapy water here, a piece of kitchen towel. I'm just going to wipe that over. Like that, and then you can use a dry piece just to dry that off like that. Okay so the pieces are now ready for priming and as you can see I've laid them out here on my piece of card and I've used the um, masking tape sticky side up to attach the things to that haven't really got anything to hold on to where the whole surface needs painting. Um, things like the bread bin I can probably poke my finger inside there. I've made a little tab on the underside of the lid because I want to be able to prime around the outside edge which is visible when it's in place. Things like that I can hold on to the sort of um, scale resting part and the cutlery as well. I can actually hold on to the blades because I'm only going to be working on the handle. So just have a think about um, what area you're going to be painting and if you can hold it or whether you need to attach it to your worksheet. And then I just wanted to talk to you about this, um, what I'm calling a primer. It's 
it's a matte um, paint, it's 01 and the colour is called primer and it's a pale grey. It's not what they would recommend as the actual primer for painting white metal and you would buy it um, in an aerosol can but I found that this grey paint works fine as a base coat um, and the results I think are just as good as using a primer and the reason I don't really want to use the spray is because it turns it from a, a job that I can do sitting at my desk to something I've then got to go down to the workshop or do outside um, obviously because of the spray paint um, having said that with the oil because this is an oil based paint you still need to work in a well ventilated room so I've got my window open it does say that on the tin so you should always read the um, warnings on the tin before you start but it does tell you that you should work in a well ventilated room so we're doing that and then I'm using the largest of those three brushes and I always keep these um, little plastic bits and pop them back on once I've washed the brush and it's dried off so I'll just pop that over there and then I've just put to one side so I don't mistakenly um, give them a base coat the three pieces of cutlery that I shall just be polishing up so they don't actually have like a, a wooden sort of handle part and the scale which I want to buff up as well so I've put those over there keep them safe and out of the way okay first thing to do is to give the tinlet a really good shake and it advises on the tin to shake for at least 30 seconds so I'm going to do that now and then even having given it a really good shake I like to stir it as well and I'm using a cocktail stick and I've been shaking that for a good minute and even now with the cocktail stick I can feel that the thicker part of the paint is still sitting in the bottom of the tin so it's always worth giving it a little stir as well and you can use cocktail sticks or you might have some of those um, little coffee stirrer things make sure you work the stick right into the sort of base I was going to say corners of the tin but into the sort of base of the tin you shouldn't get this on your um, fingers if you do get it on your skin and make sure you go and wash it off immediately but like I say all of the warnings are on the tin you pull back the label and it gives you extra information so do always read the label before you start work okay, I think that's enough stirring now I always have a little piece of kitchen towel handy I'll just pop that over there okay so I'll start with the smaller pieces first for propping the um, smaller items up to dry just take hold of it in your tweezers like that the unpainted part and then I've got an old sponge here and then you can just poke it into the sponge leave that to dry like that okay so that's all the cutlery done there and now on to the bigger pieces So with the bread bin lid, I'm just going to prop that on top of um, a tin. So prop it onto something non-porous to dry. That's the bread bin done. And I've just put a couple of um, cocktail sticks into the sponge and then put the bread bin on top of those to dry when you've got a piece that's got quite a lot of detail on it like these scales sort of dot your brush over the detail 
and that will just make sure that the paint is getting into all the little nooks and crannies. And then you can brush it to make sure that it's not too heavy. It's a good idea once you've been painting for a little while, just to give the paint another stir. I just actually cut up my um, painting card so that I can get to the pieces a lot easier. So that's that first job done. Okay, so that's everything primed and I've just stacked everything on this little tray so I can move it away from my work surface and the paint will take six hours to dry so I would suggest leaving that to dry overnight and we'll continue with that tomorrow. I've wiped the excess paint from my brush onto kitchen towel and I'm now going to go and rinse that off in some white spirit and then some water and then I think I'm going to have a go at buffing up that um, scale and the cutlery. Okay, so to buff these bits up, I'm using the wire wool again. And this time I just want to buff them for a little bit longer um, than I did when I was sort of getting them ready for priming. So I don't want the um, utensils to be too bright. And do the utensils on your worktop as well, because if you hold them in your hand, they might bend. And the idea really is just to keep going. And the longer you buff them for, the brighter they'll become. So there are the utensils, nicely buffed up. And I didn't want to go too mad with them. I didn't want to make them too shiny. So that didn't take me too long at all. And I'm happy with the result on those. So now for the bowl of the scales, and I've got a new piece of wire wool. So that's probably about, I don't know, five minutes of fairly vigorous wire woolling. And it looks quite nice, but I'd like it a bit shinier. But because I want to get on with something else now, I'm going to take that with me into the living room this evening and have another go whilst I'm watching television and see if I can get that even shinier and then I'll show you how that turns out tomorrow. Okay so it's the next morning everything's been drying overnight so it's all completely dry now and what I'm going to do now is go over everything again with the wire wool just to smooth off um, the first coat and you don't have to spend too much time on that, just give everything a sort of simple rub over. So once you've done that, use your soft brush just to brush off all the dust from the wire wool and clean your work area. And then I'm going to start um, the second coat on the um, utensils again and I'm using this um, it's I think it's called natural wood brown and it's a matte shade 110 and I'm going to use um, that largest brush again because there isn't a lot of um, detail on these and I did give these a quick um, sand over as well with the wire wool If your brush bristles start separating, just sort of twist it along the edge of the tin like that to get the point back. And it is recommended to give um, everything two coats of paint. Now I'm sure on the pieces, the bread bin and the jugs that I'll be painting, 
in cream and white I will need the two coats but on something like this where I'm using a darker colour I will just do the one coat it's down to you to judge really whether you think um, something does need a second coat just have a look at it once the paint's dried and see what you think but I'm sure these will be fine I'll just grab my tweezers I'm going to stick that back in there to dry and again these are going to take six hours to dry and it does seem like an awfully long time I sort of went back to mine probably after about four hours and they were still a little bit tacky so do leave them for the full amount of time but if you're just working on your miniatures at, at weekends or something or you don't have much time then it's something you can sort of spread out maybe sort of do the first coat first thing in the morning before you start anything else and then you can come back to it later on in the afternoon and I really couldn't wait to get back to these I'm really enjoying doing these I think my sort of whole idea with my doll's house was to make everything myself and the things I couldn't make or the things I bought just adapt them in some small way just so that everything that is in my doll's house I know I've had something to do with the creation so by painting these that's my way of sort of adding my own stamp onto them if you like so even though it is quite a long-winded and fiddly process I still think it's worth it you've got the satisfaction of knowing that everything in your doll's house had something to do with you <laughs> and if you keep a little sort of doll's house journal I know a lot of people do and make a note of everything they've bought and I sort of wish I'd have started that at the beginning I suppose I could actually start it now as soon as I'm sort of redoing my doll's house I might do that actually but if you do have a little journal and you do something like this then make a note of that in there so to say that all the metal objects are hand painted. Finally, the little potato masher. Okay, so next I'm going to be painting the scales for my kitchen and both of the clocks using the matte black and that is matte 33 and the scales are just going to be black and then the clocks the black will be the undercoat and then we'll once that's dry we'll apply a layer of the brown again and then we scrape the brown away to create the wood effect but the first coat will just be the plain black so I'll start with the scales and I'm using the same brush again so I gave that a good clean in white spirit and then rinsed it out really well used a little bit of soap as well I don't know if you can see that on camera but there's some really lovely detail at the bottom of these scales and you, you wouldn't get that on a sort of mass-produced miniature because these are made using moulds they can include these sort of tiny little details that's why I love these metal miniatures so much okay, so I'll just put that shoe polish tin over there and I'm going to stand that on there to dry Okay, so I'm now moving on to the um, bread bin and one of the jugs which I'm going to do in white gloss 
and the number of the paint is gloss 22 and I'm actually using a different brush I'm using my number one brush now and just for the reason that I've just used black um, using the number two brush and I even though I've given it a good clean I didn't want to contaminate the white paint so I think what I'll actually do is get a couple of each brushes in each size um, and then just use one set for dark paints and one set for light which is what I actually do for the um, brushes I use for normal paint and we won't be able to tell until it's dried but it'll be interesting to see how well the first coat covers the grey primer or grey undercoat rather and while it's wet it looks like it's covering it pretty well So the postman just knocked as I was sort of halfway through the bread bin, so I had to put it down. And then of course I couldn't pick it up again um, without touching the paint, so I've used my tweezers. So I'm just going to put it on there, on a couple of cocktail sticks. I'll just finish that off on there. Yeah, so looking at the paint here on the larger area, it is definitely going to need a second coat. So probably another gentle sand with the wire wall and then another coat. But these smaller things in the darker colour, they're absolutely fine with just the one coat. So it's just a question of having a look and seeing what you think. But the lid as well, I can see there some of the grey coming through. Okay, I'll pop that back on my tray and then I can make a start on the jug. Okay, so onto the remaining jug. And this piece I'm doing in gloss 41. It's this lovely sort of cream colour. Okay, so I'm now going to leave all of these pieces to dry and I shall come back to them later this afternoon or in the morning. I'll see you then. So the paint on the handles of my utensils is now completely dry and the potato masher and the little ice cream scoop and the pan slice are now complete. But on the knives, I just want to touch in the little screw holes. And I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up, but along the handle there are some little um, indentations which have been moulded into the metal to look like uh, screws. So I just want to touch those in. So I've got my metallic silver paint here and I've given it a good shake and a good stir. And I've got the smallest of my brushes, so the size zero, and I've also got my spare piece of wood because I want to make this into a really sharp uh, tip. Let me take the first one there, get a little bit of paint on there, and I'm just going to twist the brush on my piece of spare wood just to make that end into a real point a really sharp point like that and then all I want to do is just dot that in there I've got a few flared bristles there so I'm trying to keep those out of the way I feel as though I don't even talk as I'm doing it. So I'm just twisting the brush again. And 
Now it's a good idea to have a spare cocktail stick handy and if you do go over just very quickly before the paint even has time to think about drying you can just wipe off any excess and again it's one of those tiny little details that some people wouldn't even sort of notice but you'll know they're there again I've got my tweezers here so I can then just pop that back into the sponge for the paint to dry and on the bread knife I can't actually see the indentation so I don't know if I've maybe put thicker paint on there or if there aren't any um, on that particular knife but I'm still going to just dot in a couple of um, screws along there And even if you've normally got a really steady hand, I always find the minute you start doing something like this, you are sort of trying to keep it steady so it doesn't stay steady. And finally the meat cleaver. This has got three little um, indentations along there. And that's that one. So I'll leave those to dry. And these are all actually going in my doll's house kitchen. So I'm looking forward to displaying all of these once I've got the units in. Okay, so my kitchen scales are now also completely dry. And I applied a clear satin varnish over the top of the matte uh, paint. And that's just to give it a bit of a sheen. Now you might say, well, you could have just used the gloss, but the gloss will have um, a different sheen. And I just wanted a more sort of satiny sheen on there. So there's the um, bowl that I polished up using the wire wool. So that's nice and shiny now. And here is the decal um, that comes in the pack. So you want to begin by cutting that out and cut close to the edge but without sort of snipping away any of the detail. There's a nice little line around the edge of the dial there. So snip that out and then just make sure that it fits nicely into place. And then I've got a little bit of tepid water here so I'm just going to pop that in there and it just needs to go in for 20 to 30 seconds and the backing will come off and then here I've got ready my tweezers to help me position it and a dry paintbrush which I'm going to brush it on for brush it on with make sure there's no um, water bubbles stuck in there and these transfers having been left in the packet te do tend to go a little bit yellow but after they've been in place and exposed to sort of sunlight they will turn white again. Also have a little bit of um, kitchen towel handy just to dab off the excess water and that's now come away from the backing. So carefully take that out and just dab the excess water off and then you can pop it into place and make sure you've got it so the dial is facing towards the top or the, the needle rather. And they're very difficult to remove once you've got them in place so make sure you're happy with the positioning before you sort of press it down and you can just dab off the excess water while it's in there and press it into place like that and then use that clean brush just to go around the edges like that and that will just remove any little bubbles that are under the surface there like that because I did accidentally tear a little bit off with my nail but because I've sort of done a bit of black around the edge of the dial 
so that there was no silver showing. You can't really tell, it just looks like the paper in there is a bit damaged, so that's okay. And there are the completed scales. I think they look really nice. And like I said at the beginning, the detail on the bottom of those scales and around the dial is so delicate. Another piece for the doll's house kitchen. OK, so the matte black paint on both of the clocks is now completely dry. And we're now going to use the brown, the same that we used for the handles of the utensils, to create a wood effect on here. So I've shook the paint and stirred it. And then you want to have handy an old brush that's got quite um, firm bristles. And this is one as well where I've obviously um, applied glue or something with it and then haven't actually washed it off properly. So it's gone quite hard and crispy. And that's what we want. Um, and what we'll do when we've applied the brown paint, we'll drag that over the top and that will create the grain effect by taking off some of the brown paint to expose the black beneath. So you want something nice and firm that's going to sort of take that paint off again. So I'm using the number two brush, the largest brush again, to apply the brown. And just do one um, clock at a time if you're, if you're doing the two clocks, because we don't want the paint to, to dry. We want it to be still, well it won't dry because it, it takes quite a long time to dry, but we want it to be very tacky. So work quite quickly. Make sure you're covering all the black especially where you've got that lovely sort of detail along the front there. We're covering the face obviously, but I just want to go around the inside because I don't want any of the black showing through from beneath the transfer. So I applied that on there quite heavily as well. Put that brush down, take this one, and then you can go straight over the top with it. And sweep like that. And I'll do this first so the paint doesn't get too sort of dry and then I'll show you the detail. Do it on the back as well. And you want to have nice straight grain, as it would be in real wood. You don't want sort of take off patches of the paint. And you can keep going over it as the paint becomes more and more tacky, and that will give you a better effect. Can you see there just how the, the black is coming through? And it creates a sort of grainy effect. That one can be left to dry. Now I'm going to do the same with the other one. Make sure the paint's getting into all those lovely details on the front there. Again, I'm doing around the edge of the clock face so we haven't got any black lines showing. And then once again, bring in your stiff brush. And the same thing again, you're just sweeping away the brown paint. And you'll be able to actually feel with your brush as well when it's getting too sticky. It won't be sort of gliding along as smoothly, so then it's sort of time to stop. As you'll just start sort of pulling the paint off in big chunks. So there's that one as well. And do give this a go, because it really does add a nice effect, and it looks so much more like wood than just painting them in the brown, even though the brown is a natural wood colour. And if you've got one of these old clocks, you'll know what I mean. Because they really do sort of start looking quite black under the grain as they get older. OK, so the paint on both of the clocks is now completely dry and I want to do the ring around the clock face. 
I did say earlier that I'd be doing a line around this one, a silver line, but actually looking at it, it hasn't got a moulded um, line around the clock face, so I'm not going to do that. So that's now almost completely finished. I'm going to paint the bottom just in plain brown. And I'm doing that just because it's got the feet. So if somebody's peering into your doll's house and sort of having a good old look around, you might still be able to see that um, silver underneath or the plain metal. So I'm going to paint that. But this one, if you look, actually has got a moulded um, line around the clock face. So I'm going to paint that. and I only actually want to paint the top. I don't want to try and go around the outside of it. So just really the, the front rather than the facing part. And it doesn't matter if the paint goes onto that inside bit because obviously the little clock face sticker will be there. I've given this metallic gold paint a good stir but as I've been sort of setting the camera up it's been settling so I'm just going to give it another stir. And you'll find that the metallic ones need sort of extra stirring. When you come to stir them, you'll find that all the sediment is sort of really sticking at the bottom. So make sure you give them an extra stir. Otherwise, you'll just sort of get a plain gold colour and not that metallic element to it. OK, so again, I'm using the tiniest um, of the brushes, the zero. I've got my piece of wood here again just to shape the um, bristles. The reason I don't do that on the edge of the tin is because the tin has... Um, sort of the excess paint on it where either way you've wiped off the stirrer stick or where you've wiped off the brush so you want to sort of do it on a, a spare piece of wood okay so let's have a look really small light strokes and I'm facing the actual end of the brush um, to the middle to where the clock face will be that way if, if sort of any paint comes off the end of the bristles it's going to go on that inside piece not on the outside actually really finishes it off doesn't it so again I'm going to just paint the bottom of this one um, just using the matte brown as well because again that's got those feet on there so you might be able to see the bare metal when it's in position and then once that paint is dry we can attach the clock faces looking forward to doing that okay so I now want to go back to the jugs and I just want to show you how it looks after that first coat. So you can see there, you can still see the primer coming through. So we're definitely going to need a second coat and possibly a third, but we'll have a look at it after the second coat and see what we think. So again, shaken and stirred my paint. And I'm using my largest brush again. Okay, so the jugs and the bread bin are now dry and I'm going to start with the bread bin and I'm going to start adding the detail and I've got this lovely blue which is a gloss again, number 14. Now I've actually got one of these bread bins um, in real, real size and I've just been and had a look and I'm going to start by doing a blue line around the outside edge of the lid and then there's just a little touch of blue on the handle there. 
So I'm using the number zero brush, so the smallest of the brushes. I've given the paint a good shake and stir. Wipe off the excess there. And I've got a bit of spare wood there just to shape the tip of the brush again. And I just want to go right around the outside. And I'm just very lightly touching the brush against the edge of the lid. really just sort of letting the lid take the paint from the brush rather than trying to sort of brush it on if that makes sense. And I've left that little um, tab of tape on underneath which I'm holding it with. Just makes it easier. Okay so I've been all the way round and if you feel you want to go over any of it, then do. But certainly looking at my bread bin out there, it isn't a lovely sort of straight line. It is a little bit broken. Don't work on it too much so that you end up with a thick line that you then can't get rid of. On the handle, it's not a completely blue handle. There is rather just a line right across the top. bring in my shoe polish tin and just very carefully lay that on there to dry. I'll put that over there and then the bread bin. So we're going to have a blue line around the base and around the top opening. A little touch on the handles again like I did on the handle of the lid there and then obviously the lettering which I'm going to leave until last because that's going to be the most fiddly. Okay, I'm just sort of doing it at an angle, so I'm not trying to colour in that whole line around the base there. I'm just sort of doing it at a 90 degree angle. So some of the blue is underneath there, and the rest is on the sort of visible line. And I'm holding the brush sort of fairly low down as well, probably sort of from in the centre of the brush. That way the bristles are going to be lighter actually against the bread bin. That's that. And then I obviously want to let that dry um, before I can then hold it at the bottom and do the line around the top. But what I can also do now is the little um, touch on the handles there. And again on my bread bin it isn't the whole handle, it really is just the the top of it there. Just want to sweep it across there. The other side. And all sort of when you're turning it round, make sure you don't touch the paint with your finger. And along there as well. And then just very carefully going to lay that down to dry. Okay, so whilst that's drying I'm going to start on the little jug. And the same thing again, I just want a line around that bottom edge. And I haven't painted um, the bottom of the jug, as obviously it's going to be stood on a surface so that won't be seen, but do paint it if you want to. Always have a piece of kitchen towel handy because if you do just accidentally touch anywhere else with the paint you can just 
make a little point with your tissue and just very carefully then rub it off and if you do that straight away it should just come off completely. As I've got this handle to hold on to I'm going to go around the top at the same time. Because I can't sort of lodge the um, base on the worktop, my hand is trembling a bit. I'm sort of trying to work around that. And once again, I'm going to prop that onto the tin over here to dry. And actually, I could probably do the handle while it's stood on there. And then with these, it's never the entire handle, it's just sort of a line down the handle to probably about halfway. So, accidentally did a blob on there then, so luckily that was in the right place. So I just want to come from where it joins the top of the jug down there, and then sweep it over the top of the handle. I'm trying to keep a straight line along that edge. Okay, so the paint had been standing for a while, so I've just given that a stir. And I'm now going to start um, the lettering on the front of the tin. And again, on my tin, it doesn't actually cover the whole letter, so it doesn't go down the side of the sort of embossed letters, but it is just rather on the front. So I'm just getting a nice sharp point on the bristles there. Just really, really gently touch the letters. We have a B. And I'm expecting a parcel today, and I'm really worried that while I'm doing this, the door's going to knock. And he knocks really loudly as well. And though I'm expecting it, it still makes me jump out of my skin. This is embossed on both sides as well, so you can treat that as a sort of practice run and then do the other side and then when you display it in your kitchen you can display it with the best side forward. If you're doing the other side before you let that first side dry, just make sure you don't touch it with your fingers. Probably best to let the other side dry first. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to continue. I actually think that second side maybe is a little bit better. So I'm going to pop that down there now. And now I'm going to do the line around the top edge of the tin. Again, if you find it easier to actually lay that down on your worktop while you're doing the lettering, you can do that. Maybe secure it with a piece of masking tape. There, so that's the bread bin and the blue and white jug done. And I just want to show you a little um, ageing technique with the other jug here. We'll do that next. Okay, so what I want to do is create the appearance of rust um, on this final jug here. So I've got the matte brown paint again, 110. I've got a piece of upholstery foam, some white spirit, a little plastic pot here to mix it in, just a medium-sized old paintbrush, 
and a cocktail stick and I've given this a good shake Just take the lid off there so give it a quick stir not as important this time to be quite so thorough and then just take a bit on the cocktail stick probably too much and just dip it into your um, pot like that put that over there and then I want to just take a bit of the white spirit on my paintbrush so just dip your paintbrush into the white spirit that over there and then I just want to add that into the pot and I'm basically thinning down the brown paint and then what I think I'll do because that's gone quite pale is just add in a little bit of the matte black so I'll just give that a quick shake and I'm trying to sort of make a rust colour here so get another cocktail stick in fact I'll just take a little bit of the black off the lid I don't want a lot a bit more than that dot that in there mix that in more of a sort of rusty colour there and then let me just close these pots okay so then just tear off a tiny little bit of sponge and use the, the smallest end dot a little bit on and then you just want to dab it really carefully onto your jug where you want sort of rust to show like that so a bit around the base and you only really want to pick up a little tiny bit of paint onto the sponge and then think about where the join in the jug is have a little tiny bit round there maybe a bit at the spout there after a lot of years of use again it's one of those things do as much or as little as you want I'm just getting another clean piece of sponge there just to wipe away the excess that I've just put on there and again do that quite quickly and then I just want to do let's pick up a little tiny bit more I just want to put a bit sort of around the handle there Tiny bit at the base of the handle. And dabbing it on lightly gives a better effect. And again, it's one of those things where you need to know where to stop. Okay, so my final job is to fit the clock faces to the two mantel clocks and again they come on a little card as water slide transfers. I'll begin by cutting these out. Once again I've got my saucer of tepid water. I'm going to dip that in there. Okay, so that square clock is now coming off of the back in there. Just get a hold of that. And then just have your tissue ready to dab off the excess water. Okay, making sure it's the right way up. Pop that into place. 
and then take your piece of kitchen towel and you can just maneuver that into place you've got a second or so to maneuver it if you're not in the right place I'm just trying to pull that down a little bit and then press it down and dabbing off the excess water at the same time that down no. I think they both look really good and if you're doing a sort of vintage doll's house they're perfect for it and there are the completed pieces and I'm really pleased with how all of these pieces have turned out I have painted um, metal miniatures in the past but I've never used any of the techniques, so I've never um, created sort of like the wood um, effect before or done anything quite as detailed as the handles of the utensils here. So a few of these pieces I'm going to be using in my own doll's house and the rest I shall keep in my collection for display purposes for other pieces. I do hope you'll give this a go. Like I said at the beginning, all of the white metal miniatures are available to purchase in my Etsy shop along with the small paint brushes and a selection of the Humbrol paints. If there are any colours that you like but you don't see for sale, just let me know and I'll order those in. And I will be getting more of these um, miniatures in soon. Like I say, they do a huge range and I just chose a small selection to start with but now I've seen how much fun they are to actually create, I will certainly be getting more in and more for my own doll's house too. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I feel that it's been a bit of a long one, but it is quite a detailed process as I say. And I wanted to show you the process from beginning to end for each piece. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.